<sighs> How much you want to bet this jet has been sabotaged? <laughs> There's just like a whole guy, like a whole group of guys on it. Well, is that, is that you or me? I don't know. I think that's the American dude. Yeah, that's the American dude. Kestrel's Russian. <gasps> How much you want to bet this jet has been sabotaged? <laughs> There's just like a whole guy, like a whole group of guys in it. Ooh, well, is that is that you or me? I don't know. I think that's the American. Go for dude. Archer. Why aren't you answering your offset? I don't have it with me. What's wrong? Where's Agent Kestrel? On the cargo deck. Yeah, that's him. Why? Kestrel's Russian. Terminate him. <gasps> Oh. Oh. Oh, this is me. Wait a minute. I've got I've got a present for you. <laughs> no! <laughs> I've got something you might want. I agree. <laughs> no! <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Have you seen my PDA? <laughs> I'm looking for my PDA, I agree. <laughs> We're assigned to eliminate each other. No, we're not. No, we're not. Hungry. Yes, we are. <laughs> That's a lie. This is the bonus mission. Yes, it is. <laughs> we, have, we have to. We have to give each other a present, Hargrove. <laughs> oh, I'm having so. I'm having too much fun with this. <laughs> so, what you doing? Oh God! We can take them down. Oh! Crap. Oh god, do you know, if I was actually a real spy, I would have teamed up with you to take down both the organizations. <laughs> it's funny that you're bleeding because I uh, shot you in the head, you know. But... No, I'm bleeding out the chest. Uh. <laughs> we could have been good to them. Oh god. I'm so sorry. What have I done? Oh god. And so Hargrove was never seen from again. Nope. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, we'll never hear from you again either. <laughs> so I just imagine Co like Cobain, like that's the guy Cobain. Just gets a PDA. He says killed, killed both of them. I get one saying kill Hargrove. You get one saying kill CST, and Cobain's like killed both of them. So. <laughs> Whew, that's uh, Splinter Cell. What a horrible ending, we both die. <laughs> we could have been good together. We could have, we could have took down the man. Uh, well, yeah. Splinter Cell. <laughs> Ubisoft. Yeah. Amazing. So, how'd you, how'd you like Splinter Cell, Hargrove? Um, I liked it. It had a very good storyline. Um, the only problem is... I don't like my skill and stealth, which is none at all. You really need to play a single player this. It's got a really good story, and you don't really have to be sneaky. But I think it's got actually likable main character rather than two <laughs> two guys that will kill each other for money. I think that's what we're getting. Are we getting paid money? Is that is that what we're after? Or is it just like oh, who knows? Ah, oh, so <laughs> it's been how long? Seven months, and we have finally completed. Spinter Cell yep. Conviction Motor yep. You do actually know that there is DLC that has more co op, but it's. Uh, <laughs> I think it's just like some extra maps. I don't think it's anything important. If we had that, this LP would be like two years long. <laughs> so I'll see you in two months. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I'm going to leave the credits in because that's what I always do. Yep, yeah, me too. <sighs> Uh, that's, uh, that's not to mention that not not to mention that it has some really awesome music. Yeah. Oh, I can't hear it. I've turned sound off. <laughs> I do. I do actually like the ending. It is a very good twist. So I've. Uh, I it mean, is. I thought you had the same cutscene as me, but uh, I think if I remember, you have a different one, don't you? You had. Uh, did you look at my it's... PDA? 
I got a phone call saying, why haven't you answered your PDA? I was like, why? Do I have to do something? Yeah, yeah, kill him. Like, oh, okay. Which one did yours say? Uh, he says, have you answered your PDA? I'm like, no. He's like, well, terminate him. He's like, oh, okay. No, mine is, um, mine's a text message. Yeah, I think you had, I think you had my PDA, or I think, was it, I don't know, it might have been your own PDA, but it would have been cool if you got my PDA. It's like, I've got to defend myself. It said, el it said eliminate Agent Kestrel. What was the point of that anyway? If it's to eliminate the knowledge of the, like, the two people going in, what about the entire people that was taking charge of the operation? Are the two companies now going to go to war? And who does Corbin work with? Is he a bad guy? He's like, oh god, I'm going into question mode. <laughs> These are plot holes. It's not plot holes, it's just I like to ask questions about everything. Well, I think it, like, Andrew Kerb, Andrew Kerbin, I think it's either Kerbin or Kerbin, I think it's Kerbin, is a main, is a, like a key character in the single player, but I don't know what he was doing in multiplayer. He's probably like an agent or something or other. <sighs> oh, wait, no, I get it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've played a single player, but I kind of get what's happened now, but you have, to, you have to play single player. It is a really good single player exper experience. I ought to do that sometime. Well, it's just a, it's a refreshing one. Do you like where, well, the multiplayer isn't a refreshing experience because it's like a typical spy game. Do you like where you're like a professional going into, like we've all kitted up, we've got all the gear, but single player, um, I don't have to go, in, I'm not going to go into it about sp with spoilers. Uh, it's much more like you get dragged into the situation. It's it's awesome. It's really really good single player. You got really good motive behind the characters and stuff. <coughs> <sighs> I think I ought to play it sometime. It is good. There's all the challenges as well. Yeah, you can do that multiplayer. It's basically there's like I think there's four modes. Like last stand. I think it's called where you've got to defend an EMP. Everything in this game is about EMPs for some reason. You've got to defend an EMP, it's basically like horde mode. Um, infiltration is the one where you've got to go in without getting spotted. You've got to do an entire mission without getting spotted. And Hunter is kill everyone. <laughs> basically, do an entire mission and kill everyone. See, now that one sounds like my kind of story mode. <laughs> it's really I'm not good with stealth. No, well, Conviction is probably the only Sprinter Cell which doesn't entirely revolve around stealth. It's like a game, it's like a action game with stealth elements in it, really. It rewards you for being stealthy, but it, it doesn't really punish you for being not stealthy. Besides death, <laughs> actually thinking about <laughs> it. <laughs> well, you could still die being stealthy, too. Yeah, yeah. It's a really good game. I love the Sprinter Cell. Uh, series. I've got, I've got the entire series actually. This, like, thinking about it, this is the only one that's like primarily action based. Although apparently Blacklist is a uh, action based, but it's actually more sneaky than this one. Uh, it's a good well, series, Splinter Cell. What are you trying? What, I th what are you I think I may come back to the single player sometime. It is good. However, I think I will send it back for now. Yeah, it's <laughs> for seven months. <laughs> Do you say you rented it as well? How much do you owe? I've had, I've, had, I've, had the, I've had the game from Gamefly for seven months. <laughs> so I think I'll send it back so that I can finally get one of the two games that are on the um, that are on my list. What's up? And I think I think I'll make LPs of them. What are they? Um, both of them will be completely blind. Uh, number one is Okami. Number two is Dragon Age 2. Ooh, uh, no, Dragon Age 2 is not that good. If you play Dragon Age One, you probably have. If you play Two, but Dragon Age Two is <laughs> nowhere, nowhere near as good as One. Actually, thinking about it, I should probably add Dragon Age One. You haven't played One? Oh, I haven't. Dragon Age Origins. Probably... Dragon Age Origins is far better than Dragon Age Two. It's so good, Dragon Age One. There's Dragon Age. Well, PS3. Have you played the Uncharted series? Is or is Origins um, is Origins? Oh yeah, yeah. The He's Uncharted series. series. The what? Yeah, Uncharted what? series is awesome. Oh, I love Uncharted. Uncharted Two is like one of the best games ever. It's just the humor in that game. I love it. Ugh. I love Uncharted. It is so awesome. I need to like 
get the second and third one. The second one <laughs> is probably the best out of the trilogy because it's just so it's so much funny and much more laid back. And the third one, it's not. It doesn't try as many jokes. I think it tries to be a lot more serious, but it's still good. I didn't expect the credits to be going on this long. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. I don't actually. I don't actually own the second or third Uncharted. I should probably try to find them though. Yeah, the first one's actually the worst out of the trilogy. Like compared to the others, it's just so bad. I mean, gameplay wise, it's just so bad compared to the others, but it's still good, you know. It's yeah, I mean compared to any other game though, it's still really awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like just compared to the other series. One series I've been trying out, like what I've just recently came into was the Tales of series. Which is basically basically like another Final Fantasy series. I mean, it's kind of wrong to like compare it to another series, it's like another shooter coming out and comparing it to Call of Duty, but whatever. But t- basically, the Tales of is a, a JRPG. I've just, just been having so fun with that series lately. It's like an Let's anime styled else. JRPG. It's really good. Well, it's like Tales of Vesperia was the one for Xbox 360. I don't know if it came out for any other console. And then it was Tales of, um, not, not Exilia, Tales of Grace's F. I don't know what the F stands for, <laughs> but it's just there. <laughs> and then I've got Re- Tales of Exilia, which isn't that, is that good. Well, it's not, I just haven't got into it, it's, I don't know. It's a good series to get into, Tales of, especially if you like anime. Let's see, next under Dragon Age 2. Will probably be. I see. I don't know what this game is about. I've never even heard of this game before. It's a game called Record of Agarest War Two. Record of. I've never heard of that. Is it? Is it Reckoning the first one? Or. I don't know. I've just randomly found it on GameFly, and it's a J. It's a JRPG. It looks a lot like Hyperdimension Neptunia. I haven't heard of Hyperdimension. Whatever that was. <laughs> <laughs> and under that is uh, Nino Kuni. Oh yeah, I've heard lots about that. I've heard a lot about it. Which is precisely why I want to run it. To play it, to see if I like it. And then under that, hey, is the Metal Gear Solid collection. Yeah, I love Metal Gear Solid. And then Fire Emblem Awakening, which... I can't do an LP of that, that's for the 3DS. Yeah, I think Geezer loves that game. Have you ever played the Kingdom Hearts series? No, I haven't. I have friends that are like, you need to play it, you need to play it, you need to play it, you need to play it! One of the best gaming ideas ever. Final Fantasy mixed with Disney. So good. I mean, (laughs) I mentioned it because the recently Kingdom Hearts 1.5, it's basically the Kingdom Hearts HD remix, has come out for, has come out for PlayStation 3. And... I've just been playing that, and it's just so good. It's it's like one of the, it's probably one of the well, it's like it's good, but then when this is a second one, it's so much better that it just completely destroys it. It's pretty much like Uncharted, like when the second one compared to the first one, <laughs> it just makes the first one look horrible. Oh yeah, <laughs> the big one, GTA Five. Came out. Oh, uh, I've never played GTA. Well, <coughs> yeah, it's definitely got like a specific audience, hasn't it? GTA. Got yeah. GTA San Andreas I've was awesome. Graph of Thought 4 was also awesome. GTA 5 again, awesome, but it's got a, it's got like a taste to it, hasn't it? It's definitely aiming towards a, sp- a specific audience. It is. But it is probably one of the greatest open world experiences you can have in a video game. I've seen part. I've like seen gameplay of GTA. I think San Andreas or GTA 4, and I don't know. Something about it doesn't really look that. <laughs> yeah, they don't. They don't look good. I mean, gr- the graphics in gra- GTA 4 weren't good even for the time. Well, I mean, I don't even. I don't even care about graphics. It's just like the way the game plays. It just doesn't look that good to me. But I mean, and then I turn right around and I put in a game into the PlayStation 2, like Mercenaries, which is. You know, a lot of people say that's pretty much a direct copy of GTA. Yeah, it's know. nowhere, yeah. I mean, no, it's not nowhere near. But I mean, the open world type 
car theft that is. That's that's basically the same, but yeah, well, GTA is more like gangster style. But the storyline and the gameplay and it's the story of the graphic novels have never been good, ever. I like the stories of uh, the Mercenary series because I think like it was meant to, it's kind of humorous the way it goes about it. Yeah, a little bit, and they do add a, a, like quite a bit of like military humor in the game, and I love military humor. My favorite thing about mercenaries was the cheats, like when you get the cheat weapons and you can get like the nuclear rocket launcher. Of course, then Mercenaries Two came out, and then everybody could tell that that was the EA that bought out Pandemic, because Mercenaries Two was crap. I don't know what I don't know what I've said this before. Why is it Why is it orange? What's with the orange in that game? It's just. I don't know. It's like with the yellow and orange in Deus Ex Human Revolution. It's <laughs> just everywhere. And then if you get Mercenaries 2 on the PlayStation 2, oh, that's even worse. It came out on the PlayStation 2. Wow. I have it on the PlayStation 2. It's completely different. It's more modeled after the first Mercenaries, but it's just been so butchered, it is just nasty to play. <laughs> Do you know what's coming out for the PlayStation 2 recently? And it's probably the last game coming out for the PlayStation 2. What's that? FIFA 14. Oh my word. I, I think that's coming out for the PlayStation 2. It's either this one, but I know recently uh, a, a FIFA game or a, or a sports game is coming out for the PlayStation 2. And it's just about to get, literally two generations behind. <laughs> that's something I want to talk about. Are you looking forward to the next generation of consoles? No. I'm not. Well, Microsoft looks looks way better than when it originally started. It actually looks well, decent. Well, yes. The Xbox One, I will give Microsoft, they did make it look better than the... Because originally, it looked like the most software-locked, unusable piece of crap in the world. Uh, yeah, but now, now it's just basically an upgraded Xbox 360. But I hope, like, well, I'm not going to get them straight away, because, like, when the Xbox 360 first came out, there was, like, loads of problems with that. And uh, I want to wait for them to come out and people to be like, okay, this is it, there's, there's this many problems, they're fixing it, and then get it. And then I've, they'll be like, I've seen, like, I've seen leaked screenshots of, like, the, um, the menu, the home menu for the PlayStation 4, and I don't like it. I think it looks too much like the Xbox 360. I haven't seen it yet. Eh, I don't like it. Steam's got a console coming out, haven't they? Um, the Steam Box? Steam Box, yeah. So much stuff coming out. The Ocul Oculus Rift, which apparently looks re is really effective. It was actually probably the first like visual, what they call it, visual uh, virtual reality that works. Virtual reality. Companies have been trying to do virtual reality forever. No, it still looks ridiculous wearing it. <laughs> wearing the thing. It does. It actually works, like when you turn your head... The camera turns, <laughs> which is really impressive. I know you watch Angry Video Game Nerd. Yeah. So you would have had to have seen Virtual Boy. So you know, you know how old virtual reality is. Yeah. Or is attempted to be. Wow, I mean, that was just... <laughs> when he duct tapes it to his head. <laughs> oh, God, I love, I love the nerd. He's got his own game now, hasn't he? The Angry Video Game, he released it on Steam. I think so. I think so. I think Yogscast has one too. Oh, who has? I think Yogscast. Well, does do they? Yeah, they do. It was That's awful. Sad. Is it? Yeah, the Angry Video Game Nerd was actually fun, but the Yogscast one was just terrible. I know there's a Tobuscus one now too. Is he? Oh god. <laughs> <coughs> Wow, the credits. <laughs> so long. Is this for the entire game or just the multiplayer set? It's got to be for the entire game, hasn't it? Not it has to be. There's no way it's just... It does not take this many people to do that short of a co-op. That reminds me, what do you think about GTA? What they've, what they've done is they release a single player and then they're going to unlock the online two weeks later, which is now actually, today. Um, I think it's today, yeah. So what do you think about it? Do you think that's a good idea to lock multiplayer until a certain time? Well, it could be. I mean, I know there's a lot of people that get games 
specifically for the multiplayer. Yeah. But also, I mean, it gets people, you know, people are like, we want the game, we want the game. So, I mean, they gave them the game. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's more like they should still give them the choice. I mean, I don't know if it was because online wasn't finished or they just wanted play people to play the single player and then play the multiplayer. And that's another good reason why. Like, it gives them more time to finish the multiplayer. Yeah, that's what I hate when... That's what EA's biggest mistake is, that they rush everything they make. Like, every single game they've ever made or had a a saying has just been rushed to hell. EA has a lot of games that have a lot of good potential, but it's just been too rushed and it's been turned into crap. Ubisoft is a good company. Like, what they did for the Xbox, they've done it for this game as well, if you look on the the main menu, they've got a thing called Uplay, which is basically, if you get certain achievements in the game, you can unlock additional content for it. Like, for Assassin's Creed 2, you can unlock new costume and uh, another level, like another dungeon that you can do. And I think that's a brilliant idea, because gamer score right now is just pretty much, it's just, it's not got no real use, and I think Uplay was a fix to that. Besides bragging so, rights, so what, I mean, for the game of school. What do you think? Do you think Assassin's Creed 4 looks good? Yeah, well, is it the Black Flag or is it Assassin's Creed 4? They, weren't they separate games, if I remember? Or is it Assassin's Creed 4? Black Flag. It's Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Black Flag was awesome. It looks, re- it, it looks really good. Bit, oh, I think any game that's now, like, Assassin's Creed mixed with pirates is like, <laughs> it's like a brilliant idea right there. And you, you probably saw it coming straight away from it's like Assassin's Creed is starts in history. It's like okay, can we have pirates, please? I really do like the direction that Ubisoft has taken Assassin's Creed, but I'm not really sure if like the locale of the next game is going to be all that great. Yeah, well, I think like because they've always like made it around certain events in history rather than a place. Yeah, and now they're just kind of. Their main thing is just kind of the Caribbean. I think they're just trying to keep it fresh, aren't they? They're trying to get something new for each game. Yeah, and that's that's a good idea. But I'm not really sure if, like, the Caribbean is such a... I mean, it, it, it could work. I'll give it that it could work, but I'm not sure if it will be... I, I think there's better that they could there could be. I think the most difficult thing to do is to get reasons as to why to go back in time. Because, like, from the first game, it was like, we need to find this. And then for, like, the second trilogy, which is... It sounds weird to, weird to say that, isn't it? Like, the second game was a trilogy. <laughs> it's kind of uh, weird. Yeah. Each game, like, we, well, you're training through this, and there's all this, and then Assassin's Creed 3, you need to go back in time again to get this, and then this. <laughs> and then Assassin's Creed 3, it's, we're going to save the world. Assassin's Creed 4, no, now you need to go back in time to get this other item. <laughs> Why can't I just go back and get them all at once? Because your memories are locked, you have to ease yourself into it. I've been doing this for years, dude. I love Assassin's Creed, but there, if there's one thing that I really kind of wish that there was... I mean, I, I really love Assassin's Creed, but I'm not really crazy about the idea of just skipping back and forth from modern day to really old. The past. Yeah, I get that. And then the whole time, like, the sequence and the the animus and all that. It's because they've got two focuses for the... It's like the main characters of two... Well, it's like two main characters for each game, and it's just so weird. I think it's good. It's, it's a good idea in, like, as an idea, because it's like you've got one character that goes throughout every single game, and then each of the games have their own main character as well, which... I can see it as a good idea, but it's just in practice you play most of the... Like, 90% of the game is about one of the characters besides the other one that's in all of them. Yeah. And really, I think they should have just went ahead and made it like all the game that one character because it's really the to me the best part of all the Assassin's Creed storylines are Altair, Ezio, Connor. I, I think <laughs> the very last Assassin's Creed game is just going to end with Desmond Miles being a badass. <laughs> Like a really good assassin. Like, he's got the experience of Altair, Ezio, Connor. Who's the guy in Black Flag? It's. It's someone new, isn't it? Edward. 
Um, Edward. Edward. Edward Kenway. I mean, all those are on their own, each assassin is badass, but now he's going to have all the combination of all those assassins in one guy. He's, he's going to have to be untouchable. He's going to be, like, a complete badass. He's going to have to be. It's going to be... Built, it's been building uh, him up. I'm, I never understood why they couldn't just keep... Well, I mean, I guess I do understand. But they give the guy... They give Edward Connor's last name, but it's not actually... It's not Connor. Yeah. <laughs> And and the time period that this is is Connor already dead? Is it like in further in the past, or is it a little bit further in the future? Or I don't know. Uh, it's probably. I think they're going closer to the modern. It's I. I think it's. I think it's probably pretty close since there's pirates. Since there's pirates, there's probably Royal English Navy, and that was usually around the t- same time as the colonies and. Oh, look, the credits are done. <laughs> and here we are. Uh, Yay! So, <laughs> it's a, it's a splinter sound, look at picture. <laughs> yep, this last episode is just going to be nothing but conversation. Well, the credits have started. So, tell me about the weather. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess we'll end it for here. Oh, yep. All right then. Well, thanks for that. Uh, I will see you in my next video guys and uh, you see me doing whatever the f- whatever I'm doing next I don't know I just go where I want to all right yep. thanks for joining me Hargrove thank you CST see you guys see ya